How do I look? İyi akşamlar. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this event which I always cherish. Anything done by high school students in service of science and expanding one's horizons. So I'm already 12 seconds into my talk, so I'll be running a bit, but so this is a journey, so in a journey either you either walk or run. So um, I'm a psychiatrist, uh, a medicine man of words, and okay, thanks. And, and also I have been involved in uh, works of cognitive neuroscience, mostly into understanding of how we feel, how we think, and how we express our thoughts and emotions in words. And although I was not very successful as a scientist, uh, then I went into the business of narrating science, talking about science, which is one of the scholarly lines you take in medical schools. And now here I am actually to talk about uh, my interest in words that took me to that journey of science and scholarly work that uh, actually uh, determined my life. Um, my father was blind. He's one of the major elements of this journey. Uh, his blindness, actually, he was not blind until 1937 when he was aged uh, 11. And, uh, and at you know, age 11, as you see in this picture, aunt, uh, he was able to play mandolin and follow notes, and most importantly, he could read. And following a retinal detachment operation, uh, he lost his sight for good, and I never saw him with his full sight. So, uh, but he was able to graduate from law school, practice law, teach, do lots of scholarly activities, write textbooks, etc. But uh, he always, he did job, he did kinds of work that required lots of reading, and he had to read, and indeed he loved to read. But his uh, disability uh, caused, uh, I mean, he led to a particular need that he always needed someone to read for him, because in Turkish, especially in, in, in Braille, not in Turkish necessarily, but in Braille, which is a special alphabet, uh, a tactile alphabet uh, for the blind, there were almost nothing at that time to read. So he had his readers who read him law books, and not only law books, but other, other books of interest. In 1959, I was born as his first son, and here you see us, you know, in our house in Karşıyaka, Izmir, and and he's looking into uh, an invisible photographer, although he couldn't see at that time, but he seems so happy, and and I had I had a wonderful childhood, and and when I reached age six in November 1965, I learned how to read and write. I was at the first year of my elementary school, and that brought me some responsibility at home. My major chore at home was to read for my father, so uh, because he needed a reader, although he had uh, an assistant during daytime, he needed someone during the weekends and other times, and he wanted to read not only law books, but he wanted to read newspaper articles, newspaper columns, novels, librettos, and all other stuff. So that's how I was exposed to, by reading the columns in Jumuriyet or Aksham of that time, to writings of Çetin Altan or uh, Yashar Kemal, or also at, as a child of age six. And also, I was also exposed to Dostoevsky or uh, Tolstoy or Stefan Zweig again at age of six, because I was reading to my father, and you can't think how boring it was. And, and my father was so smart that he could catch every uh, attempt of mine to skip lines and to, uh, because he already had an idea about what, what the next line would be. 
but so this is my illustration of what I remember because I used to sit mostly on the floor and read the newspaper just uh, as spread on the on, on the floor um, the, the, so I was acquainted by the concepts of the Vietnam War US socialism and so on at age six so there are some facts to remember you know uh, about reading so this is uh, some hard science so I put it in writing so we know that earlier and repeated exposure to vocabulary to words in familiar contexts in in as part of the text or passages it increases our vocabulary and also words are the tools you know for faster and elaborate processing of our thoughts and emotions without words it's very difficult to convey what we feel and what we think and also what we see and actually in the during the initial steps of establishing a vocabulary and expanding it you really need to show extra effort so that's the most difficult part indeed and and it's really simply difficult and boring in the beginning and many of the kids at that age even at older ages they avoid as much as possible because it's reading requires the brain's activity to make a transition from a default state what you can also call a resting state to an active task related activation state so you can see over here so this is our brain uh, looking from the left side and this is the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and this is the reading area mostly superior temporal gyrus and what happens and I can assume what happened when I was reading to my father a Chetin Altan article or Yashar Kemal's long paragraphs depicting Chukrova and uh, Inge Mehmet and others so this system was working well however it, it needed some kind of a push from the frontal lobe so I needed to activate it and the push was one my father's need which was a necessity and the second my father's need because I had to meet that need so his blindness his disability was the reason for my early exposure to increasing or increasing my word power exponentially and so motivation my motivation was helping my father as well as the necessity and his authority as well so actually the neural tissue in human brain develops in response to repeated continuous stimulation this was actually what happened to me every day sitting next to my father and reading texts that are that I would otherwise never read at that age actually helps these neurons as you see these are dendrites and synapses how they increase by age by stimulation this is the language area from zero to two years and the same pr uh, process actually took place in my brain this is the assumption I that I never took a real measure of that but I can tell that uh, some of my teachers remember me uh, by as a child who knows some strange words who knows how to look the things up in the dictionary and things like that but I was never good in soccer or in fighting and that kind of thing so this is that that part of my brain was stronger than the rest actually reading in the brain obviously is a process that uh, continues across the lifespan so what happens to many of us we are not necessarily uh, reading that sort of complex and difficult texts as a, as, a, as a young child but most of us learn how to read and even read very difficult, difficult texts so here you see that a children a child you know like this is a model a template a child aged 8 to 13 while reading a difficult t uh, text you see there is a really this is an fMRI image there is a strong activation of certain regions very intense so intense that the blood because when there's an activation that means 
there is an increase in the blood flow that, uh, to that particular region because it has to work. So it needs oxygen and glucose and the blood vessels uh, transport glucose and oxygen to that area. But because of that blood flow, you can feel that headache, you know, when you're working and trying to understand a difficult text, you have that headache. It's because of that increase in the blood flow in that particular region. So, however, as you see, if you follow that particular reader to older ages, here as an adolescent and here as a young adult, you see the intensity of that focal activation decreases. And as you see here, the workload is distributed across the brain. So that means the same work is done, but due to the increased connection between different parts of the brain as part of the development and as part of the continuous stimulation and exposure to verbal material, so we are able to use different parts of the brain to understand. Because how do we learn about the meanings of the words? So we mostly guess, you know. We are able to guess what a particular word means depending on the context. And if you have already been exposed to several, too many, many words in many contexts, you are able to estimate the possibility, the, the meaning possibility of a particular word by being able to tell that from its context. So here, as you can see, we need less activity as we read more and more, and reading becomes less of a burden, but becomes a joy. So I never thought that at the age of six, I would grow up to be a man who would write, read as his profession, and who would uh, read for fun, who would read for pleasure, but that was due to the necessity that came with my father's disability and his interest in reading. So I grew up, as you can see, some personal pictures, because this is a journey, I put the pictures, and you can see my father getting older from this child. And what happened, I took this uh, scholarly work, and my, my interest in words and sentences uh, continued. And what else? My father continued to read. However, his major preoccupation was now, especially when he reached the age of 75 over here, 70s, uh, he began to think about other blind people who did not have readers. Because he said, I was fortunate to have you and your brother and others and, uh, as my readers, and, and I was able to pay some people to read for me. But he went on uh, at the age of 75, nine years before his death, to establish a library for the blind. And this library for the blind, named as Türkiye Görme Özürler Kitaplığı, established in Izmir, is now the number one producer of uh, Braille books to lend more than the government is able to do. And, and, he, and, uh, and now my father, and not now, but at that time, he said, you know, I don't need you anymore to read me these articles and books so you can feel comfortable. So uh, I will not ask such favors anymore. Actually, I was not his final uh, reader, final little reader, but here you can see my son who grew up to be, uh, to take, grew up to take that uh, weekend reader position. When I look back from today, although my father had no neuroscientific understanding of what was going on, he provided me with the opportunity, he provided me with the opportunity to expose myself to the world of words that enhanced my capability of understanding, that enhanced my vocabulary, which is supposed to be associated with one's academic performance in the future, which was okay, better than okay indeed. And, and also it determined my career journey and made me a man of words. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.